All right, sword friends. The other day we cleaned this little tiny ninja tanto here, the Shokosugi design, and it was fun to do. Small little blade. This one was hanging around and a lot of you commented, we'd like to see this big one being taken apart. So today we're gonna to do this giant long ninja to Shokosugi design sword. I have never taken this apart before, so this should be interesting. It's very tightly put together. I have a feeling I'm going to have a little trouble with these pegs. This sword is probably not meant to be taken apart a lot. One thing to remember with Mekugi pins is they're not the same shape. If you look, one side will be tapered and the other side will be a bit wider. Now that's hard to tell because it's the same width here, but if you look carefully, there is a bit of a wedge design here. So I can tell by looking that in order to get this side out, which is a little bit wider and it's tapered a bit, I need to bang this side down. This is the thinner one and this is the thicker one. So in order to get these out, I'm gonna remove the saya. I have to remove the pegs from this side. If I remove the pegs from the other side, I think it's just gonna shred them and destroy them and then you'll have to make new ones. So I'm going to use some non-traditional tools. I have my rubber mallet here and I'm using this little thing which I think holds up shelving. It's just a tiny little piece of metal. It's a little peg and I'm going to remove the pegs by hitting this this way. That one came out and we're going to do the other one here. All right, so that wasn't too hard to get those little pegs out. So here you can see them. I'll give you a little close up. I don't know what they're made of, probably bamboo or something. They are slightly carved to fit these particular holes in this particular tank. I'll put these aside. Now this is not gonna just come right off here. So I'm gonna use my rubber mallet and a little bit of paper towel. Now, in order to get the ska handle off and the suba guard, this is not gonna come off easily. So I'm gonna put a little buffer here, a piece of paper towel, and I'm gonna hit the suba guard lightly with this rubber mallet here to move it a bit. So just that much, I can see it's already loosened up. If you're careful, you're not gonna hurt the sword at all. This thing is really tough. Okay. So now I'm gonna pull the handle off. I've never done that on this sword. So here's the handle. Put that aside. This is a sepa, which is just a little black spacer here. The suba guard, which just looks like a hunk of iron painted. You have a second washer keeps things tight and you have this little habaki collar here see that that's called habaki and that's probably made of brass I'm guessing so that is really tight all right so here we have this chokuto straight blade I want to say it's t10 I'm pretty sure it is t10 look at the size of that tang do you see it here there's nothing special about it so it's just a hunk of steel. I can see all the grinding lines here where they carved out the holes. Uh, it's still in relatively good condition, so I can tell there's no moisture that's been in there. And then, as, of course, you can see this blade starts here and is highly polished all the way down to the kasaki down at the end here. This is a really hefty blade. Very, very good quality, in my opinion, for the price point. Now, I'm just gonna give it a quick little polish here. So, we wipe this on carefully because it's a very, very sharp blade. And that does its work to remove a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of the metal. And of course, all the dirt, oil, and debris that might be left on there. That's all it takes. And you find a cleaner cloth here. You can use paper towel, just 
stay away from paper towel that has ink and oil in it. Some paper towels have printing or of course a microfiber cloth is really good. Just be careful what you wipe it with, but high quality paper towel works really well. You don't have to use any of that fancy rice paper or anything. That's just an old gimmick and that's what they used back then. They used what was available, believe me. Summer I would have used paper towel if they had it back then. Just make sure it's clean and dry. Look at that. That really brings out the polish in this blade. Beautiful piece here. You do not have to touch down here on the tang unless you really want to, but you know, that's going to be handled. I'm not worried about that. It doesn't show. Isn't that a nice looking blade there? Just cleaning up this area from all that polish. So let's take a look at each piece again. This is just a simple long cut handle. It's probably 13, 14 inches long. It has a simple Kashira butt cap here, which is tied in the end. It's all simple painted black metal. It does look like there's Samikawa in here, which is real. There are not large nodes, but that is not fake plastic. It does not seem to wrap around the entire thing. I think it's two panels, and I don't think there's paper underneath the ska wrap. Everything is pretty simple design. The guard here is just, again, simple square guard, painted. So you can repaint that if you want. You could spray paint it and simple washes and habaki here. It's just a very simply designed sword. I don't know if Shokusugi designed these or he had some help, but obviously this is the style that was in his 1980s and 90s ninja movies. And this is the one that I actually fell in love with as a child. I loved seeing the sword and I saved up enough to buy one of these. Not this one, this was more expensive, but a cheap version of this which even back then was about $130, but it was probably back then stainless steel. These are still kind of mass manufactured, but when I say mass, I mean there's only about five of these on the internet right now. So they probably only make these when you special order them. Now these are sold as the label Ninja To. To means blade and of course the Ninja. This is not again, I have to say this every video or people freak out, this is not what a ninja sword or shinobi katana would have looked like. Obviously, if you were samurai working to do ninja type skills, you would not carry a different sword around. It would make no sense. You would stick out and be arrested immediately. If you wanted to blend in, you'd use a katana, just like everybody else. Now, were there straight chokuto blades around at that time? Of course, those were throughout history, all the way back from China into Japan, they used straight blades for hundreds of years. But in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, this type of sword was associated with the on-screen ninja, the shinobi. So it stuck and it still sticks to this day. And even though it might not be historically accurate, it is still damn cool. And I still love straight blades. I love the cheesiness of the ninja movies and shokosugi because why it's a childhood memory and if you know your memories like i know mine they are powerful and they stick until death i love these types of swords so in my collection i have several of them now i'm using this knife blade oil many types of oils work this is a good one for swords knives guns whatever this will last you forever so i'm just putting a few drops on and I know I'm using paper towel, which will absorb a lot, but I just want a thin layer back on here to keep it from rusting, especially this time of year here in Ohio. It's very humid and hot out in July, August, September, October. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on that. You do not have to oil down here. Of course you could, if you want, I can put a little oil on here. Certainly not going to hurt anything and it might even help the handle come off a little bit better next time. This habaki does not go on easily, so I just give it a little tap with that rubber mallet. Again, that's a nice tool to have around. Now it fits super, super snug. The seppa usually has one side that's completely flat and one side that's slightly raised up. This has a little bit of a design on here. So that's the side that you want to show to people. So that's the side that goes up. Obviously, the flat, dull side goes against the super guard. 
and the second washer again I'm looking for the flat side to go against the guard the handle only goes on one way so you can tell by the shape here which way it goes in listen to that dirt that's in there see this feel all that so there's a lot of dirt and shards of metal in there and that's typical of a lower end sword so let me get rid of that so that that cleans it up a little bit better well that's a cool sound I'm going to hit it down here lock it into place so that it's solid and in there no rattling you want to make sure that the holes line up so if you need some light to look through I can tell that they're pretty lined up here pretty well this is the side that's a touch wider so I want the thin part to go in first here and the second one down here and the second pin goes in pretty easily as well again this is a sword that is designed to be beaten up and used it's not an heirloom so if you need to hit it a little bit it's all right this is not an expensive sword to me in my collection so I have used this sword to cut all kinds of stuff I've cut trees and all kinds of targets with this bamboo you name it so it's got scratches on it this is a heavily used sword that I use in my collection so I'm not worried about hurting the sword or anything like that the wrapping is super tight on these really good job with the wrap on here and as you can see the pegs are nice and tight now everything is really good gosh the balance is fantastic on this I love the balance on that sword it's so quick perfect for stabbing or cutting so I'm just gonna clean up a little bit here I hope everybody watching is doing well with your life and that there's some good exciting things happening with you let's give this one more tiny wipe here with a clean cloth all right this saya is very plain I took the sageo cord off it's just simple wood it's been dinged up and banged up and it's got this high gloss black finish so very carefully we put the sword back and there it is cleaned up reassembled a beautiful shokusugi ninja toe again find these online on ebay type in shokusugi ninja sword and many of these in different lengths will pop up like i said in the other video for either of these two swords you're going to pay a lot in shipping so if you order more than one maybe they can give you a deal on the shipping the shipping will be anywhere from 80 to 100 dollars just to ship these so when you see a sword online that costs $300, they might have lowered the price in order to get you on the back end and shipping. Obviously, it doesn't cost $100 to ship these, but they're kind of finagling around the price point there to get more money from you. Do I recommend these? Absolutely. Only because I do think, as far as a sword goes, they're a highly functional, solid blades, good quality steel, razor sharp, put together well, simple, effective. Heirloom quality, heck no, absolutely not. But fun factor, 10. Bargain for your money, a nine. Cool factor, 15. <laughs> okay, my friends, thank you so much for joining me on cleaning the large and the small ninja sword from the Shokosugi design. We've cleaned many swords in the past, you and I, and we'll clean many more in the future because this is just a fun kind of way to hang out and talk about things that you and I love. Some people love knives, some people love judo, some people love firearms, some people love swords. I happen to love all of those, but these are really special to me. Do you have any of these? Do you have any special swords that you grew up with from some sort of anime or movie or book? What does your collection look like? Send me some photos of your swords. I would love to see them. Comment below. Tell me about your sword collection. How many do you have? What are you going to do to save up for these? Have you seen Shokosugi movies? Are they cheesy? I'd love to read your comments. We have some great part-time mods that take care of our dojo channel for us. And we can't say thank you enough to them who help edit these videos and keep the channel family friendly and clean. 
we really appreciate all the moderators. Thank you for watching, my friend, and you have a great day or night wherever you live. Best of luck and good training to you.